And hey, hello there folks, welcome back to RJB TV with me, your host, RJB. And today we've got Leibaku against Burger Sasu. Leibaku did not play for about half a year, but somewhere in early 2023, he returned to StarCraft to pretty much beat people up. That's kind of what he does. He beats people up because he's very good. He's here on the blue Protoss on the bottom middle of the map, and we have Burger Sasu on the top middle of the map. Let me just change the scoreboard there on the top, because we have other players than Gensa and Forvade in this game. We have Burger Sasu with no wins and Leibagu also with no wins on the board. Wait, that's an O. That's not a zero. That's an O. Let me just change that. That's that, that's embarrassing. Oh my god. Look at this. Burger Sasu, Libaku, no wins for either player. We got Zerk on Burger Sasu here on the top middle of the map. So these two players, they are somewhat to be considered arc nemesi of each other. Although you could also say that Burger Sasu and Fourth of Eight are also arc nemesis. Or maybe you could just say that a whole lot of players who play each other a lot are arc nemesis, arc rivals of each other. Like Burger Sasu and Lee Baku, they meet a couple of times a week. And by a couple of times, I don't mean that they just play a couple of games. They play a couple of best of sets. And those best of sets can be three games, five games, seven games, and nine games. So the bottom line is, let's just say that they play like 10 to 20 games, sometimes even 30 or 40 games every single week. These two players truly know each other in and out. They know every single little detail about the other one. They know exactly how the other will play. Libaku here, middle spawn. They know that it's Protoss against Zerk. Burgersasu always picks Terran or Zerk against all these Protoss players. And he's, I'd say you could consider Burgersasu one of the best Terran and Zerk players as a result. Because he gets so much practice in against these very best Protoss players on fastest map. And as a result, Burgersasu is pretty much the most entertaining Zerk and Terran player on fastest map 1v1. Pretty much the most entertaining player. He might not be the best player, although he's pretty close to being the best player. He's not far off. Like, he's slightly behind Brain. Slightly behind... No other names actually come up into my mind. He has a kind of a unique style. At least in the past, he used to be more aggressive. But I'd say he's evolved over the past year or so to being a very smart player. He used to be pretty much a player who would go all out, all in, mega hyper aggressive. But he's kind of toned that back to being a little bit less aggressive than he used to be. So he goes for a double hatchery in the choke, pool in the back, one sunken in the front. This is what's this is something Rabbit started to do first. And other people started to adapt this style of going for a very cheap and efficient choke. You get two hatcheries in the front, and then you can build eggs in between this little narrow space to keep the enemy out. And by doing that, you can pretty much get away with only one sunken in your choke, and then you can get more hatcheries in the back. Whereas otherwise, you would be forced to build three, four, five, six, seven sunkens to defend your choke against early zealous aggression like this. So not having to spend uh, money on building creep colonies and sunkens, which also costs drones, you can instead build hatcheries in the back and focus on building up a stronger economy faster than you otherwise would. So basically you're accelerating your progression into that very important hatchery, I mean lair technology, or in this case, in Burger Sasu's case, most often he goes for just simple hydrolisk technology. You're speeding all of it up by doing this particular setup for your choke. So Burger Sasu here is being met by a very fast robotics and a support bay by Lee Baku. Lee Baku arguably has, I've said it many times before in pretty much every single Lee Baku video, but he really is insanely good at Protoss against Zerk with robotics strategies. His robotics strategies are really, really good, very well controlled, and almost impossible to beat. But if there's a player who can maybe do it, it's probably Burger Sasu. 
precisely because he has so much experience playing against Lee Buck Goose Protoss. He knows every single little thing about it. So Burgess here is pushing towards that pylon on the middle. Lee Buck Goose tried to build a proxy base here on the middle. But Lee Bagu was trying to do two things at the same time. He was trying to progress technology back at home as fast as he could, while kind of cheaply trying to build a proxy base on the middle. But Burger Sasu very wisely built a lot of Zerklings and Sunkens on the middle to push towards that proxy base on the middle, killed the probe, slowed it down, prevented it from happening. So Lee Bagu doesn't lose much. He lost the probe lost maybe two or three zealots, lost a pylon, so it doesn't hurt him, but it definitely does take away some control over the map that he would have had had he gotten that cannon of the proxy base running on the middle, because it also functions as a containment on Burgosasu, and right now Burgosasu is not being contained to his base. He's got complete freedom of movement all over the map. Also, look at this, We've got Zerklings on the sides to spot out the shuttle that's flying across. There's a reaver inside. Do we have Hydalisks? Yes, we do. Precisely because Burgosasu was able to get more hatcheries than usual, he already has 34 drones and a couple of Hydalisks to defend. He didn't build too many Hydalisks. It's about uh, 13 Hydalisks in total in his base. Got a couple of Zerkins there as well. Getting Evo Chambers. Getting Sunken Colony there. Shield is still there waiting on the top corner. Corsair is pushing Overlords away. He's trying to find a moment to fly in which is right now, but Burgosasu knows it's happening, although the shuttle just kind of flies right past. It's gonna unload drones on the scene. Drones running away, they're all hotkeyed. And the Scarab does not explode. Reaver went down, he killed everything on this side, which wasn't much. Like, two, three, four drones? It was pretty much nothing at all. At this point, you could even say that Libagu lost more than he got out of it. Lost the Reaver, Shuttle pretty much dead and gone, the Corsair right there stayed alive, low HP, regenning its shield. So neither player actually losing much in that exchange. But the fact that Burger Sasu managed to keep all of his drones alive, except four, maybe two, he got out on top. Because he already cheated the system going for this choke and making it work. Dark Temple there on the middle, Dark Templar there on the middle. Interesting choice. Maybe to help protect the probe in the case Burgosasu tries to attack through the middle with a early Hylodisk attempt of breaking out. Kills the shuttle, kills the Templar, easy as can be. This one Zerkling probably helped him out unless Libaku flew right over this angle. There's two Zerklings on the side and two more Zerklings on the other side. The sh Corsair did clear out a path, so to speak. Let me just take away vision. Like, he did clear a path for shuttles to fly over in the future, but the Zerklings there, their value is really, really high as they're getting so much early vision against shuttle drops to help him defend his drones, which is working really fine. Like, one of the few things Burgosaus is very good at is coordinating these three Hylodus groups on every single side to perfectly cover every single path of approach Lee Baku has. But Lee Baku, gonna keep on trying. Never gonna give up. Never gonna give up. Oh, well, there's nothing inside, so maybe he did give up for now. He has to wait for an opening. Shuttle number two there, coming in. Also, two shuttles that are empty. A little bit interesting from Lee Baku here. I was expecting High Templar drops those two shuttles, but they're both empty. Which means that he's just gonna have to wait for a few opportunity until a Reaver or a High Templar gets picked up, which will take some time. So I, I'm not sure I entirely understand why he is delaying the shuttle drops by this much right now. But at least he's got an arm, he's maxed out. He's gonna try to break through the middle. He's just gonna try to break through, but a lot of Sunsets are behind that, and we have a lot of Hylus behind it as well. So the choices Lee Baku are making, I understand what he's trying to do. But Burger Sasu has had so much time that he was able to prepare every single little thing just perfectly fine to deal with the options Lee Baku is trying to apply. 
apply to the situation. Lurkus or Morphing is going to be much harder in the near future for Libaku to get through. Did they pick something up? The shuttles are two high Templars, but once again, Mulesks and Hylodisks in between. It's so difficult to get through if you cannot properly deny vision on those high grounds or on the sides. It's just so difficult to get through. He also needs an observer for the lurkers. The dragoons though are killing the hatcheries, which is great. He's opening up a small path in the middle. Wait, oh, the dropper coming in. That's the very, f and he doesn't get stormed. He snipes both the high templars because there were no zealots in between to take fire from the sunkens. So the high templars unload and they die. Small little ball of lurkers on one little spot to protect around the lair. He doesn't have a hive yet. Is he morphing a queen's nest though? No, he's going to stay on the lair for a little while longer. He's going to use the mule to defend himself, which is something I've seen both Rabbit and Biol do very successfully. I've not really seen Burger Sasu do this specific style of defense that often usually it's much more focused on a lot more hatcheries. He does have a lot of them though. He does have a lot of hatcheries, but usually it's all about Lurker for Hydalisk. This time around, he's using Mutalisk to fly around and snipe stuff out of the air, which I really, really like. He's gonna snipe that shuttle out of the air with the Mutalisk and kill it. The Mutalisks are just so fast, moving about the base, way faster than their Hydalisk, so it's easy to snipe shuttles out of the air with the, uh, with the Mutalisks. And when you get the high finished up, get the Greater Spire Morph, you can immediately change them into Guardians. So I really like what I'm seeing here from Burger House. He's making Lee Buck Goose strategy, which is a very good one, seem not very effective. Purely because he's countering it pretty much perfectly. Which is making it look way easier than it is. Great weaving in and out with the Mutalist killing the Reavers from the air. Reavers there, kind of just sitting there. Not much to defend them. There's not a whole Dragoon. They used the Dragoons earlier to clear out a path and lost them. This is a really good play from Burger Sasu. Lee Buku is having a really tough time. Really tough time. And if there's any viewers from SCW watching, you know how difficult it is to play a proper Zerg against Lee Buku because Lee Buku just absolutely destroys every single Zerg. And I don't think he's lost many Zerg, uh, Protoss against Zerg games in the foreign uh, 1v1 competition. He doesn't lose much or often. The drops simply are not working. Libaku has changed into a frontal mass attack. Guardian's not yet morphing, the hive is still on the way. He's pushing through, he's actually gaining a lot of ground right here. The Sunkens are gonna finish up, which gives the Mulus time to go in. As the Goons have died, Reavers, goodbye. Reavers, goodbye. You're too slow, nothing to protect yourself with. But he did gain ground. He did gain a lot of ground. Burke's house is trying to gain back that ground around his choke. And does so by putting Burkers on the scene. Hive is finished up, Greater Spire on the way, more drones waiting there in the front. He's got six hatcheries, he's got seven there. He's popping some spores as well. One more hatchery on the side, so we've got seven, seven, fourteen, fifteen hatcheries in the base at the moment in total. Libaku has hard to go look for what Libaku has, because there's action going on right here. So let's have a very quick look. 8, 3, 3, 4 gateways. So that's about, I'd say, 16 gateways in total there on the scene for Libaku. Maybe slightly more. It's 17, actually. We've got 17 gateways. 3 Robos pushing forward. Mulus coming in once again to kill the Reavers. These Mulesks have paid for themselves five times over, killing the Reavers every single time again, slowing down the push from Lee Baku. Now, Lee Baku's got another draw prepared here on the middle. It's not yet fully loaded up, though. But he's going to have to get those shuttles in there at some point, kill those drones, and slow Burger Sasu down, because right now, Burger Sasu has not lost more than four drones, which is really impressive. Drops have been tried. Libaku has been trying to sneak those drops in there, trying to find pathways to snake through, but it's not been working. More drones being pulled to the front to build new creep colonies. Drop coming in. Got Mulus and Hylus in between, sniping the shuttles. Does he unload a High Templar? No. The shuttle with the High Templar, one down. It's like when there's four shuttles and you've got High Templars in one of them, 
it's a 25% chance that the first shuttle dies with High Templar. So it's kind of a gambling thing. And it worked out perfectly fine for Burke Sasu. And the push here from Libaku actually pushing through a pretty big number of Sunkens, but we have Mulus here from Burger Sasu flying across the map. Gonna morph into Guardians just outside of vision and push onto the Nexus that is not very well protected. No Templars here on the scene. But here in this choke point, Burger Sasu actually might be able to break into the middle. But only 15 minutes in. The pressure has been very, very high. But Lee Baku seems to just hold on to control over the middle, barely holding on. While you're back at home, Guardians are finished up, moving into position to push onto the Nexus. This game by Burger Sasu has been a very quick progression into a very advanced late stage. Zerg with complete production capability to take out... Oh, Templars on the scene, storming. Needs one more storm. Nexus on low HP, losing HP quickly. Come on, High Templar storm once more and save the Nexus and down. Oh, drop in the base. And he, oh, so at the same time as he was defending, he got a storm drop off, but hit nothing. So very good awareness to be fighting and defending at the same time from both players. Both players doing defending and attacking at the same time. So the Nexus stays alive, new cannons have to warp in. Burgess Hasu is now facing another push into his base by Ali Baku. It's a difficult push here though. It's difficult to get through this tight narrow choke point into a wide open area surrounded by Sunkens. It's so difficult to do. If he had hit the drop, it would be a completely different push. He would be pushing through much more easily because Burger Sasu would not be able to replenish what is being lost. But given his economy is still somewhat fine, he can just keep rebuilding whatever he loses and keep on defending while also going for these pretty sneaky attacks across the map to kill the Nexus. Libagu knows he's got to do it now. He's got to be fast, but being fast, not going to be enough. I Templar on a scene, but no en he does have energy for a storm. But the Nexus is going to go down. Did he kill the He killed the High Templar. Wait, no, it's right there. He killed the High Templar. I thought he killed the High Templar, but nope. So Lee Bagu is still pushing forward. Mulus are returning back home. They did their job of killing the Nexus. Economy is now being drained slowly for Lee Bagu. Got some queens throwing down and snares. That's actually pretty useful. Actually pretty useful. Please basically broken through the entire sunken compartment but now we've got the highlight spawning zerkings on the scene upgrades are pretty good 2-2 there against 2-2-2 two, two, two. so 2-2-2 two, two, two for everyone weavers shooting their low as best as they can trying to hit those zerklings and highlights right between the eyes doing so pretty successfully he's looking for the observer finds it it means the lurkers now have an easy time defending Libaku is burning through his money. Both players are on about equal amounts of minerals and gas. But that's only because Burger Sasu is spending his money so extremely quick. Guardians have finished morphing and now it's time to break free into the middle. Lee Buck Goo got bested by pure macro and very smart and aware Zerg play. This game looked very much unlike what Protoss against Zerg usually looks like. Usually Protoss looks so dominating, but here Zerg just looks overpowered in the hands of a master like Burger Sass as he breaks into the middle. It's time to take it all down. Time to tear down the house. Burger Sasu gets himself a victory here in game number one. There was a drop there on the side. Managed to unlock only Dragoon. But I don't think a drop hitting would have saved the game for Lee Baku. He simply got outplayed in every single way by Burger Sass. Let me just add the score on the top real quick before we move into game number two. Okay. So that was a good performance of Burger Sass, very good controlled performance. Basically a complete shutdown defense. Completely shut down every single method of attack that Lee Baku had in his bag of tricks. Nothing worked. And when nothing works, a Zerg looks almost unbeatable. Looks almost unbeatable. 
Now we've got game number two coming up. We got Pink Protoss here by Lee Baku. Teal Terran. Teal Terran on the middle bottom of the map. It's Burger Sasu on what I would say is actually my favorite race for him to play. I like his Zerk against Protoss a lot, but his Terran against Protoss, I like that one the most. There's something about his Terran that is just so satisfying to watch. I do not like watching Burgosasu's Protoss. There's something about his Protoss that just does not sit right with me. It just does not feel right in my heart, but his Terran, it just hits the spot exactly right. It just hits me right in the heart. It just feels right. So Burgosasu starts off with the Barracks first. And I think Leibogu's going to start off with Pylon Gateway, Gateway Nexus. And if he doesn't, he might be in some minor trouble because he's on a middle spawn against a middle spawn and Burger Sasu has the option to go for an early Marine SCV rush on a choke that's warping in. And yeah, Leibogu goes for Nexus Forge first, so no gateways to protect himself with some Zealots and exert some pressure onto Burger Sasu. He's going to be the person defending, trying to get his choke up and running. And Burger Sasu almost has his first barrack finished, second one on the way, and there's number three being constructed. So now the question becomes, will Burger Sasu find Lee Bakku on his first scouting attempts? Or will it be one of the later scouts? He's using... Oh wait, is he building a wall in the front? Okay, he's starting the construction of a wall in the front and scouting with the other SCV. He's going to the left middle spawn. Wait, is he scouting? He's scouting for a mid gate. I thought he was going to go here to the left. He's not. He's going to the bottom right and the bottom left. So if he went straight for the middle right here, he would find the cannons and be able to stop them from finishing. But because he went to the bottom corner first, and didn't go here first with the SCV, and because he's chasing the probe with the marine, the cannons in the front will finish warping up. Which just goes to show that a lot of things can happen that can prevent you from stopping the cannons, and none of them are about actually fighting or controlling your units. It just random things happen, and then you lose the window of opportunity to kill the cannons. At least he killed the probe though, so there's no information for Libaku on what Burger Sasu is exactly doing. But Burger Sasu did reveal he's got marines, he's got them very early, which of course does reveal to Lee Baku that Burger Sasu probably went for at least two barracks. Maybe three, probably three. Probably three. So we have the refinery finished up. Getting a double command center. No academy yet. So we're probably gonna see a very early factory. Burger Sassy. Very early factory. If he went for the academy first, we might have seen the factory get delayed a little bit. Not sure. But we might have seen it get delayed a little bit. So the robot already coming in for Libaku. That is the plus side of going for this specific build order from Libaku. Without going for the double gateway to protect the choke, you can get faster gas, faster cybercore, which of course means <clears throat> you can get faster robos. You're getting double robo in the front, one citadel in the back, triple gateway for the zone of production. Things are going smooth for Libagu and smooth for Burger Sasu. Academy's on the way. Commander number two finished up, number three almost finished as well. Got double refinery in the back, getting an engineering bay. Now, I'm not sure if he's going to get two more barracks or not. Usually, two more barracks are very common on middle spawns like this. He might decide not to because recently the meta has been shifting to a more heavy factory build order on these middle spawns. And it looks like he's moving into the middle. Zealots walking into the Marines. Zealots not on attack move, so they take a lot of damage from the Marines, forced to retreat back to the choke. That is not exactly what Libigo wanted to happen. At least he didn't lose the Zealots, which is important. But 
Burger Sasa now does have leverage over the middle. Reavers are on the way there, though. Reavers are on the way. And when the Reavers finish up, the tides will change because Marines, they do kind of suck really badly against those Reavers. Star Brother finished up, getting a control tower. Not going for the re not going for the Wraith. Not going for the Wraith to kill the shuttle as it approaches. Scans the choke there, sees the Zealots, sees the shuttle in the air, which of course signals that the Reaver is pretty much almost finished. So we have a 530 Reaver and a 535 Reaver. Very quick Reavers here from Lee Baku. He only just now started his Gravitic Booster for his shuttle, so the shuttles won't be that fast yet, but the Zealots will have speed coming up in about 15 seconds. So walling off that front, tank sieging up a little bit too far away, can't quite hit the Reavers when the Reavers are low to hit the supply depots. Should be just out of reach, should be just out of reach. I do like the fact that he didn't build a supply depot here, but a bunker. Gives him a little bit more control over this area as opposed to building a supply depot here and a bunker behind it. So Libagu there decides not to go for the frontal attack, changed his mind, goes for the back attack, flying over the bottom corner. Burger Sasu knows this because if he's not getting attacked right now, it means the shuttle redirects and he arrives just on time. Libagu unloads, kills the turret. Gonna have to kill some marines as well. Unloads, can he kill more? It kills more, picks it up, unloads it, picks it up again, kills more, and it goes down as well. So no SCPs go down, but killed pretty much all the marines. And they go for five barracks. Seven barracks. Burgers has going for seven barracks. He's got the dropship there flying across the map. Libaku sees it there. Does he have something to protect himself with? Yes. Zell's running back and forth. Waiting for his time to strike. There's one tank in there. Goes in. Tank. Does not unload. Got a drop there waiting on the bottom corner of... Oh, it's getting killed by a turret. Oh, wow. 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 That is a very uncharacteristic mistake by Lee Baku gets his shuttle just across the hill. Something I've never seen him do before and it just dies. And that's going to very negatively impact his future. Burkasasu, we're 7.30 into the game. Burkasasu lost no SCVs, lost a couple marines, but has taken no damage. And he's going for seven barracks build order, so there's going to be marines all over the place. Every single little nook and cranny is going to be covered up by marines, protecting the angle, protecting the holes from outside penetration from shuttles. He's going to be perfectly fine. Got some zealots around the middle, waiting for their time to strike. Got no level one attack. So Libagu didn't get level one attack yet. It's getting queued up right now. Storm almost finished up. Didn't get a third Robo yet, might get one soon, might not. He's getting more Gaoys on the top here. So I feel like he's gonna go for a frontal attack and a shuttle drop both at the same time to mix up the methods a little bit, but also to force Burgers House to focus on two locations to defend at the same time. So he's gonna try to stretch his multitasking as thin as possible to hopefully get leverage over Burgers House and kill some SCVs are in the back. Scan comes out there on the front, sees the shuttle, sees the High Temples as well, sees only two Robos. Now only seeing two Robos, of course, means that either Libagu is going for carriers or for more gateways. If he had more Robos, he would not be able to afford more gateways or Stargates. So this does give Burgess House a lot of information to eliminate from what Libagu is possibly going to do. So defending becomes a lot easier just from seeing that it's only two Robos and a three or four or five. Means that Libagu is not heavily committing to just shuttle drops, but planning on something else. Got one Stark on the way for Corsairs. We got a big frontal attack happening there. You can run right through. You can just run right through. Unloads behind the wall there. We got some tanks each up there further behind the wall. Two tanks, three tanks there taking shots from Stemplar Storm. Reavers finishing them off. Wait, one tank survives, it's gonna be big. That's gonna be very, very big, because now Marines have support from a tank in the back. One more tank rolls up to the front and sieges up, and Zealots do have to retreat. Looks like that attack did not succeed in its goal. There's a scan coming out yet again, and Burger Sasu is moving into the middle. Very surprising to see this happen. Moving into the middle with his nine barrack bill order. Nine barrack bill order. 
Drop there on the bottom right, though. Seize it with the Engineering Bay. And Libagu is... Is he gonna force it? He's gonna force his way... F no, he turns around. Does not like what he sees, does not like being seen by the Engineering Bay. Returns, he's gonna wait out his time for another attempt. Bunker's being... Burger Sass is playing his very, very aggressively, very proactively. Already taking control over the middle. Libaku sees it with the shuttles. So now he knows what's up. And he probably does not like what he is seeing. Got level 1 attack there on the Marines. Level 1 armor and level 2 attack both on the way. The tanks are getting their level 1-1 one, one right about now. They just started. It should be coming up very soon. So I have not... Oh, big attack there. All, all over those tanks. Unloads his entire shuttle army on top of the tanks, on top of the marines, storms in between, everything dead and gone. It looked like a very strong position by Burger Sasu, but apparently Libaku thought that it was a tasty snack to take out of contention right about now, and completely close to the middle, now it's a 60 supply lead, Burger Sasu is in trouble now. The script has flipped, Burger Sasu is in trouble, but he does, he's gonna go in, drop there, coming in the backside as well, got some marines, sniping the shuttles perfectly. Not what I expected to see them die so quick. This small little blockage in the front is making it hard for him to walk through. Storms on the Marines, storms on the tanks. But it looks like Burgess has was apparently in less trouble than I thought he would be. Took him a lot of effort, a lot of awareness, but he made the defense look kind of easy, I guess. He made it look kind of easy. Now Lee Baku is scratching his head because he is finding that all of his you know, options, all of his attempts are simply falling flat on their face. Nothing is working out, which is very rare to see. To see Lee Baku's attempts at hurting Burger Sasu not work is rare to see. Usually there's at least some damage happening, but this time around there's pretty much no damage happening at all. This is basically game number one all over again with Burger Sasu just playing perfectly, perfectly defended every single little thing. And I like this heavy marine composition from him. It's not something that, it, it's something that used to be popular in the West. A lot of barracks, only a couple factories, but I've never seen this actually being done in the Korean 1v1. But apparently, they're doing it now as well. Marines are cheap. You can get one, you can get level two attack and armor, and they are strong as hell. But they do die really quick to high Templars. Libaku tries to force the fight in the very narrow choke point in the front. Oh, it's gonna be difficult to get through. Actually, scratch that. Impossible to get through. Shuttle drop there, trying to get through. Cannot quite do it. There's High Templar inside. One more shuttle there, joins the fray. Flies over the right side. Burghaz was laughing because he knows he just might have just won the game. Because Libagu didn't break through. But a drop there on the side, waiting. Going to try to break through. Gets scanned. Flies in. Getting closer. Getting sniped out of the air by a couple Marines with level 2 attack. Level 2 attack. Oh boy, is it strong. Now Burgess House is on the pushback into the middle. He's gonna try to punish Lee Baku before Re Lee Baku properly recovers. Lee Baku has one, one, one upgrades. His air head level one shield, no armor. Got a lot of gateways though. We got like seven, two more, nine, ten, fifteen, nineteen, twenty-two, twenty-five gateways. More robots in the back. Safe from a frontal push. So he did get more robos and put them at a safe location. Burgess has a 92 SCV, so Lee Baku has more army, but his upgrades are worse than Burger Sasu. Flies in there, but gets his shuttle sniped, so nothing of value on low. So everything around the middle is kind of just safe from harm. Bunkers in the front taking most of the damage, trying to break through, but the tanks in the back are providing so much support. SCVs are being thrown forward to open up supply space and maybe build more bunkers and more turrets to make pushing and advancing more difficult for Lee Baku. Got a proxy base being built on the side, but Lee Baku is so occupied with defending against Burger Sasu's very heavy, strong, high pace pressure that he might not ever find the time to spend any actions on building this proxy gateway base there on the right, on the left. 
So more structures being built on the middle. A lot of Zealots are waiting in the base. Oh, it's going to be a difficult, difficult time for Lee Baku from this point onwards. Level 2-2 two, two for the tanks, almost finished up. Lee Baku is getting some trash talk from Burger Sass, who unloads successfully on the tanks in the back. But the tanks in the back are not his problem, the ones in the front are. Because his entire army just got erased. Erased. He needs to get a shuttle drop in right about now. Kill those SCVs and cut the economy off so that no new units can come from across the map to deal the finishing blow. It's a tough task ahead of him. Um, he's having some trouble slowing Burger Sasser down. He's trying his best with Storms, well-placed Marines. They just die instantly to the Storms. Very strong choice to use those. But now there's Vultures in the mix as well. He just keeps on producing more Marines. It is so damn strong. Level 2 attack, 1 armor. Almost level 3 attack, almost level 2 armor. EMP on the way as well. Fessel arrives on the scene. Dark Templars no longer an option. Close from here, tries to push back the Fessel. Not going to work there though, but the tanks in the front line there do get mowed down. So, yes, Leibogu is managing to buy himself a little bit of time. Got two KOEs on the way there on a proxy base, but the proxy base is very far from being finished. It is a difficult task. I've said it before, but the task is not becoming easier. Good storm there, though. Easily takes it all out. Easily takes it all out. Might we be seeing a turnaround here? Marines in the back with stim attack, breaking through. Level 2 armor finished up, level 3 attack finished up as well. KOE units on 1 1 2. Not as strong as the Marines. Marines might just be way better than people give them credit for because they do provide so much damage with Stim. There's no medics in between, surprisingly. Mines exploding on a lot of zealots. Ooh, that's got a sting. Great EMP, and Lee Baku just leaves the game. Burke has a wins. He made it look easy. He made it look easy. Libagu taps out, and that's GG. Libagu stopped believing. The overpowering force here in his choke is too great, his supply count too low. Was never gonna work. Burrasasu really played pretty much the perfect Zerg and the perfect Terran both those games in a row. Highly impressive stuff. Highly impressive stuff. It's a little bit different from the Burger Sasu of old that used to take way more risks. But this, he's got everything perfectly figured out. Every single little detail in his play, he's mastered, perfected the details, fine-tuned it all. Now he's like a race car, Formula 1 car, racing on the racetrack at peak performance. And Libagu apparently could not keep up. Thank you for watching and hope to see you return next time around when I make another video. Have a great day.